Karta, former director, National Security Council Secretariat, will be joining us live. And Abhijit Ayer Mitra, senior fellow, Institute of the Peace and Conflict Studies, is also with us. Abhijit Ayer Mitra and uh, Dr. Tara Karta, Namaste. Abhijit, let me let me start with you and ask you: Has the government of India done the uh, taken the right stand? Have they gone about it the right way? Under sections three and four, they've called it an unlawful association. They have not called it a terror organization under section one. But they have look move. They are moving towards a comprehensive ban and also crippling the finances and also social media footprint. Absolutely. Look, uh, first the process was right. Uh, they didn't ban it and then look for proof. They've gone about uh, because you know this is a hydra-headed organization. They've learned from Pakistan where you know everybody has their civil organization, their charity organization, and then their terror wing. Uh, 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 PFI has spread like this into many hydra heads. And what they've done is they've raided all of them. They've collected the requisite amount of proof that uh, satisfied them, and then they've gone in for a ban. And this is what you need to do if you fear that some organization is ultimately going to be uh, become a terror organization. The problem with classifying a terror organization has always been that it's impossible to prove that A, B, C, or X, Y, Z is going to explode a bomb somewhere. Right. So there are new definitions right. required for this. You need to be proactive in this because you know you can't wait for a bomb to go off mm. and then cry yourself hoarse. Now the problem here has always been mm. how do we navigate that legal boundary between proactive banning mm. or post facto banning? Mm. And I would say in cases of national security, mm. it is probably much better to go in for proactive bans, given. that this is not a political organization that we're talking about this is a political propaganda right. organization rather it is a religious propaganda organization uh, which should not be given the protections that political organizations are given dr tara karta no i think it's a, it's certainly the right way to go about it that you are cutting off like like abhijit said something which has grown like i like i said earlier on your show it has grown hugely over the last 10 years you know it's kind of created this whole mm. Uh, mm. atmosphere of hatred and and that is what i am like really really upset about is that there is this they they fuel this sense of alienation from the majority community from that comes the terror attacks by a few mm. you know who joined up with the islamic state who mm. joined up who you know and the attack on the kabul gurdwara and so on and so for that is a very small percentage but that climate of hatred which they have created is what is dangerous and is what we need to reverse but having said that i i am hmm. i am banning something is is the easiest task actually now comes the next step i mean they will reinvent themselves hmm. into something else there is the question of the resentment of these cadres particularly students the young people who joined some of these organizations mm. sometimes on genuine causes well, let's not forget that sometimes the causes have been genuine mm. so the mm. question is how do you uh, mm. you know how do you prevent this from coming up again in another form and doing the same things these guys did for years mm. it's not it's a very very organized one with very and remember it has no it's very curious it doesn't keep a record of members so it which is very unusual so yeah. it's it's a, it's a kind of the shadowy organization which probably is still there i mean you can ban it till the cows come home but this sentiment of hatred that has mm. been fueled is going to remain so how do you deal with that that is my my mm. my question my suggestion is if i can say just give me a minute mm. is that you hive away whatever is the social work that they're doing whatever the good that they're doing and try and may we work it into another organization which can then receive formal state support so okay okay you are doing welfare work go ahead and do it that reduces the hatred that reduces the cadres that reduces the suspicions that's one way to go hmm. but uh, in doing that you're also taking a risk because you do not know who's radicalized and who's not because they have always posed a very very benign front despite what their real intent is abhijit ayer mitra Uh, it it cannot stop here you cannot say okay we have done the crackdown we've done all of this now it's over it doesn't Absolutely. stop here perhaps the work just starts now it, it is this is just the beginning we can't see this as the end as tara mam said 
uh, this is just the beginning because now what you'll have to do is you'll have to keep putting the people who associated with the PFI under the scanner. And remember, they've got a whole bunch of overground workers, be it lawyers or so-called uh, public intellectuals, etc., etc., who will support them. Uh, what are you going to deal with that? Because see, their job specifically is to carry on the radicalization through other means. What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about the same people reassociating in different forms? Remember, PFI itself is a sort of reforming of the semi which got banned. Uh, I'm not saying this, it's the government that's saying this, mm. right? So what do we do about that? That is yeah. point number one. Uh, remember, even in cases of charity right. and good work, uh, if you remember Hezbollah in uh, right. uh, 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 Lebanon started off as a charity organization mm. where uh, the uh, state capacity was right. extremely limited, where the uh, Lebanese government could not provide uh, sta any kind of services, uh, right. health, anything of that sort to uh, right. the average Shia in Lebanon. This is how Hezbollah grew. And then they hmm. based their military wing. They used hmm. it as a front for money laundering and they based their entire military wing. And today they're one of the most powerful. Right. They're all like a state uh, within a state. So we also have right. to prevent that out here. And right. there's really no easy ways here because there's too many shades right. of grey here. We don't know when one metastasizes into the other. Very, very well said. We just have to keep our antennas up, our eyes open, our ears uh, all, always to the ground and listening and to try and nip this into the bud, not allow it to become a hydra over a decade and a half and then move to crack it down because sometimes you cannot weed out everything. You cannot weed out all of the grass. There will be those which will sprout back again and that's the big danger as far as society is concerned. Dr. Tara Karta and Abhijit Ayer Mitra, thank you very much. Keeping this conversation short today because I want to do justice to Jammu. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a very special effort. We're up next after the break. Stay with us here on The Right Stand.